Hey guys, welcome back to our VCP 6.5 ICM hands-on training. This is lab 9 into the series. In this lab, we'll go ahead and take a look and we'll work with the VMFS data stores, which is VMware. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the different things that we can do with the data store. This is the high-level objective that I plan to cover in this lab. We will go ahead and work with the existing data store we'll go ahead and see if you need to change the name of your data store it's pretty easy so we'll go ahead and explore the rename functionality where you can go ahead and rename one of your existing data store then we'll go ahead and take a look and see how can you create a new vmfs data store at the same time we'll go ahead and look take a look at some of the different features of functionality that we can work with the data stores you can go ahead and expand it vmfs data store We'll go ahead and see how we can remove a VMFS data store. We'll go ahead and extend a VMFS data store. And now we'll go ahead and make use of the previously the iSCSI LUNs that we have added in the previous lab. Uh, we will go ahead and make use of those iSCSI LUNs and we'll go ahead and create a VMFS data store on them. And then probably we can go ahead and share uh, that LUN among the different hosts, giving the functionality of a shared storage for multiple hosts. So let's go ahead and jump into the hands-on uh, quickly and then we'll go from there. So I've logged on to the vSphere web client. On the vSphere web client, the first thing we'll go ahead and explore is uh, we will take a look at one of our existing data stores. There are many ways you can go ahead and explore your existing data store. So on the home page, we have a storage tab. You can go ahead and click on storage or on the left hand side, you can click the storage and same thing can be accessed from the home. So let's go ahead and click on the storage first. Let's start from the storage. Once you click on the storage, uh, there are a couple of the storage that are being listed on the left hand side. There is data store one, DS44, DS45, there is a DS3 NAS. So when I go ahead and click on the DS1 uh, or DC1, there are a couple of options. And if you go ahead and take a look again, you can go ahead and click on the data stores. You are being presented with the similar information here. So now let's go ahead and click on our data store one. So when you click on the data store one, uh, there is a host tab. If you click on the host tab, it kind of indicates, okay, hey, this data store one is being mounted or being accessible or is available only on the host 43. Same way if I click on DS44 and if I go to the host tab that says that DS44 or data store 44 is available or being mounted on host number 44 and so on. If you need to go ahead and rename one of your data stores, now you go to your data store and just simply you can go ahead and right click on your data store and there is an option that says rename. You can go ahead and change the name of your data store to anything that you like. You can do the similar thing if you go back to the home and you can go ahead and click on host and cluster. Within the host and clusters, you can go to your specific ESXi host and within that there's a tab that says data store. You can go to the data store and you are being presented with a similar kind of information. Now again, you can go ahead and click on the data store that you want to rename and you can go ahead and do the rename. Uh, you can achieve the same thing by going to the configure tab. Within the configure tab under the storage, we have the data stores and you can see all your data stores available. We can go ahead and rename the data stores from here too. So now let's go ahead and rename our data store one to something else. Let me just call it my data store for my host number 43. So it kind of indicates DS43. So I'll go ahead and just rename my data store from data store one to DS43. And if you go back to the storage view one more time, now within the storage view, we have a DS43. It's being mounted on host 43 or available on 43. 44 is available so that's it's pretty easy you can go ahead and rename your existing data store for one or the other reason just in an easy way to identify we can certainly go ahead and make use of uh, this rename functionality let's go ahead and explore how do you really go ahead and create or add a new vmfs data store to one of your esxi host or multiple esxi hosts again adding in host is uh, very easy we can go back to the host and clusters view within the host and clusters view i can always go ahead and click on go to the specific esxi host under the data store we can go ahead and do a new data store or if you want, you can go to your data center level and you can right click on data center level and there is an option that says storage. Within the storage, there are a couple of options that says a new data store or a new data store cluster. So in this case, we will go ahead and add a new data store. So simply go ahead and click on a new data store. Now you are being presented with a new data store uh, wizard. So sim in the location, just, okay, the location for this data store, yes, it's a DC one. So simply go ahead and click next here. Now we are being asked to specify the type of the data store that we plan to add here or create here. The first one, it says VMFS, create a VMFS data store on a disk or LAN. If you have NFS, create an NFS data store on an NFS share or we can have virtual volume. So in this case, we are working with the VMFS. So we'll go ahead and simply click on VMFS and go ahead and click next on this page. Now on this page, we are being asked to specify a name that way we, could, we can identify uh, this particular data store. So let me go ahead and call this data store, uh, whatever you know, name it. 
I'll just call it my LUN1, LUN-1, and you can specify any name that you want. Select the host to view it's accessible. Now we need to go ahead and select the host on which this is accessible. So I'll go ahead and select our first host, 43. Now on the 43, these are the available LUNs or the available uh, devices which are available to us. Let me go ahead and select LUN from this list. We will be uh, using this LUN1 for this exercise. Now just simply go ahead and click next on this page. Now we have been asked to specify the version for the VMFS data store. So there are two options being available. There is a VMFS 6, there is a VMFS 5. A VMFS 5 allows the data stores to be accessible by ESX or ESXi host of version 6.0 or earlier. That means if in your environment, if you have the older host like running 6.0 or 5.5, it makes perfect sense to create a VMFS type volume. But in our environment, we have everything running 6.5. So I will go ahead and create a VMF6 uh, type of uh, the data store. VMF6 enables advanced format, which is called 512E, and automates space reclamination support, which is called unmap functionality. So the, that re automatic space reclamination happens. You don't have to manually claim the space. That's one of the features with the VMFS6. Now simply go ahead and hit next on this page. Now we have been presented with the partition configuration. Within the partition configuration, it says, okay, hey, the free space is 100 gig. The capacity is right now 100 gig. The LUN that is, the name that is being assigned, it's a LUN1. Now when we are configuring uh, this uh, data store, we can say use all available partition or certain things. Now the data store size is 100 gig. So now let me go ahead and change this data store size instead of 100 gig to maybe let's say 70 gig. So we will be using only 70 gig out of this 100 gig and we will be making use of the rest of the space for our uh, later exercise. Now, once everything looks good, the block size, I'm leaving that to 1 MB, space reclamation granularity is 1 MB, Poly priority is again low, so it will uh, go ahead and delete our unmapped blocks on a kind of a low priority. When everything looks good, just simply go ahead and click next on this page go ahead and review all the settings if everything looks good just simply go ahead and click finish here and only a couple of seconds and you can see our LUN1 VMFS was just added it's of type VMFS6 the capacity right now it says 69.75 gig the free is 68.34 and some of the other things here so if I go back and quickly go back to our storage view one more time and if I click LUN1 and these are the some of the details you know the CPU memory other things that which are being consumed now let's repeat the same process and we will go ahead and mount one more LUN onto the same host so let's go ahead and quickly repeat the process that we went through and everything if everything looks good we should have the LUN2 being uh, shown on the this page and right now you can see the capacity for LUN2 is 100 gig. We will go ahead and expand uh, our VMFS data store that we had created earlier. If you recall when we added the LUN number one, our LUN capacity was 100 gig but we only created a LUN of or the VMFS or the data store of only of the 70 gig. Now we will go ahead and expand that to consume the rest of the space on our uh, LUN basically. So if you need to increase the your data store capacity, this would be something that you need to go ahead and uh, make use of. So to increase the capacity of your LUN2, LUN1, uh, or you know, if you want to expand your LUN1, uh, we can go through multiple different ways. So let's go to the storage tab again. Within the storage tab, these are our different LUNs available. So in this case, the LUN that we want to increase the capacity or extend, uh, it's our LUN1. So now let's go ahead and click on LUN1 so we can go ahead and expand or increase the capacity for this LUN1. So I will go ahead and right click on LUN1. When you right click, there are a couple of options and one of the options that being presented, it says increase data store capacity. So now just simply go ahead and click on increase data store capacity. And we are being presented with a small wizard where we are being shown the available LUNs or devices that we can potentially use for the expansion or expanding or increasing the capacity of this particular data store. But if you recall, when we created this LUN1, we used LUN1 and we had left some space on LUN1. That's why if you see on LUN1, the last column which is expandable and it's being marked as yes, that means we can use this particular LUN and using this, we will be able to expand or increase the capacity of our existing data store, which is LUN1 in this case. So we will go ahead and select our LUN1 and just simply go ahead and hit next 
on this page it clearly says okay hey the capacity for this LAN was 100 gig right now the free space is only 30 gig what do you want to do so we'll go ahead and say okay hey use the free space 30 gig to expand the data store so that means we want to use the rest of 30 gig available on this LAN and expand our existing LAN one with this 30 gig so we'll have a total capacity of 100 gig once everything looks good if you need to do less you can always go ahead and reduce it so now let's just simply go ahead and hit next here and you are being presented with some of the information here if everything looks good go ahead and click finish it would be a couple second and once that is done now just go to the dc1 and now within dc1 if you take a look right now the our lun one was just expanded or the capacity was increased to the 100 gig if you see right now the current capacity is 99.75 gig and it's the same as our lun too. like the way adding a LAN is very easy we, if you need to go ahead and remove uh, your LAN for any reason you can go ahead and do that again there are many ways to achieve that um, on the storage tab again we are looking at our storage view and remember we had added the LAN too so you can always click on the LAN that you don't want and there is an option that says delete data store you can click on the delete data store to remove your LAN so let's go ahead and remove our learn to that we had just added so this operation will permanently delete all the files associated with the virtual machines on the data store so you need to be careful when you are uh, doing a deletion of a data store in production make sure you don't have any vms or any critical data and once you have verified everything you can go ahead and definitely remove your data store so simply go ahead and click yes here it'll be a couple seconds and it should be done i can go ahead and refresh that just to and as you can see, our LUN2 uh, just disappeared from our list. We are able to successfully uh, remove uh, the newly created LUN. We just expanded our one of the data store by using the available space on one of our LUN. Now we know on the LUN1 there is no more space left. As you can see, the size or the capacity of the LUN is 100 gig and uh, we have created data store of the 100 gig. But let's say for some reason, uh, you still need to increase the capacity of uh, this LUN but now we don't have any more space left on LUN 1 we can make use of the another LUNs and we can go ahead and really extend this VMFS data store across multiple LUNs so right now if you see that we have LUN 1 so I'm in the storage if I go to the LUN 1 and let me go ahead and click on LUN 1 if we go under LUN 1 under the configure tab we have uh, there's something called device backing and you can see this LUN 1 is right now being backed by one of your LUN and that LUN had the capacity of 100 gig. And on that LUN one, we created a VMFS partition. Right now, we will go ahead and extend this LUN to make use of two LUNs. So to really go ahead and increase the capacity from 100 gig to 200 gig for this LUN, we will be using another device for the backing or we will be using the another LUN to really extend this VMFS data store size. So the process is very simple. Uh, you go to the LUN, you go under configure under configure there's option that says journal so within the journal if you see right now these are the details okay hey this is my learn one the capacity is nine current capacity 98.34 gb free out of 99.75 and these are some of the details on the same page we have an option that says increase so if i go to increase it says increase data store capacity and that's what is we were going to go ahead and use so now just simply go ahead and click on increase to increase your data store capacity and now we are in the increased data store capacity wizard these are the free or available LUNs that we have on our system and we can pick one of the LUNs to really go ahead and expand the size of our existing LUN 1 so let me go ahead and select our LUN 2 in this case and I will go ahead and click next again the LUN 2 is of size 100 gig so we will go ahead and make use of the whole size so in the partition configuration I would just say use all available partition so that means I'm picking up complete 100 gig for, for the expansion or for expanding my existing LUN1. I'll go ahead and simply hit here next and it shows some of the detail and it says okay the future data store size will be 199.75 gig and that's what we are looking for. If everything looks good just simply go ahead and click finish and it will be a couple of seconds and our data store or our LUN capacity will get increased by almost 100 gig. Now let me go ahead and click on DC1 and as you can see now the LUN1 shows a capacity of 199.5 gig and the free is 198.09 so we just went ahead and expanded the size or the increase the capacity of our LUN1 
So if I go back to the LUN1, and if I take a look at the LUN1 right now, the capacity is 198.09. And if we go under device backing, we should see the two device. And as expected, we are seeing the two device. These both the devices are backing up this LUN1. That means the LUN1 is being spread across these two underneath LUN1 LUNs. The LUN1 and LUN2 that we had assigned uh, for the backing or for the expansion of this LUN1. So that's how you can go ahead and expand the size of your LUNs. And if you still need to increase, you can go ahead and add more LUNs to this LUN and go ahead and keep on expanding the size of your data store if that's what you want. We'll go ahead and repeat one more time uh, creation of a data store. Uh, but so far, the data store we had created were also on the iSCSI storage. So I'll go ahead and quickly walk you through uh, the same process one more time. So just simply go ahead and right click here and within the storage, we will go ahead and say, okay, hey, we want to create a new data store. Now that's on the DC one. Now go ahead and create that as a being a VMFS. Now give it a name. Uh, I'll call it shared on my iSCSI storage. Go ahead and select the host. Uh, and in this case, we will go ahead and pick the LUN number three. Now simply go ahead and click next and the file system or the version that we want for this one is VMFS6. We want to use the whole capacity. Just simply go ahead and click next and finish. So we just went ahead and created a VMFS data store using the iSCSI. So now this data store or some of the other data stores that we have been working all were served by our iSCSI. And now we can go ahead and mount this data store to rest of our ESXi host and we can make use of this as a shared storage. That'll be all for this lab. I will see you guys in the next lab. Thank you.